Have you always wanted to build the ultimate gaming PC, but have either very limited or zero PC building experience? Well, if so, you're in the right place because not only am I gonna show you which parts you'll need, I'm also gonna show you exactly how to speed build this $850 beast that's perfect for streaming step by step. I'm also gonna share the benchmark results at the end of this video to see how it performs, so definitely stay tuned for that. Don't forget to check the affiliate links in the description below for links to everything I'll be using today as well as their latest prices and alternatives if anything is out of stock. Okay, let's get started. Hey guys, it's Mark here and I'm back with another gaming PC build today to show you just how to maximize your budget and translate it into the best bang for your buck in terms of gaming performance. Now today, this rig is actually gonna easily net you an average of 70 to 100 FPS at 1440p across even the most intensive of gaming titles, and it also smashes lower intensity games like CSGO with up to 200 FPS. It's also great for intensive tasks like Photoshop and video editing too, and has more than enough power for streaming. I actually built this PC for Becky's brother and as it's his birthday coming up, I'm gonna be throwing in a couple of optional frills that will probably push this over budget, but of course, you don't need to include these at all if you have a strict budget. Okay, let's take a look at what's inside this beast. For the motherboard, I've gone for the MSI B450 Gaming Plus Max motherboard. So for some reason, this is currently double the price over on Amazon US. So instead, go for the ASRock B450 Pro 4, which I've linked below. So first of all, get your motherboard unpackaged, lay it on top of the box because we'll be using this as our anti-static workstation whilst we install the first few components. Let's start with the processor. Today I'm gonna to be installing the AMD Ryzen 5 3600, which offers insane price to performance and great multitasking outside of gaming too. If you can spare the extra money, definitely get the 3600X as it offers just a little more extra juice for very little extra money. Of course, both are linked in the description below. So on the motherboard, raise the metal arm on the processor socket by lifting it and gently nudging it away from the socket until it's fully raised. Simply line up the gold triangle on the processor with the triangle on the motherboard, gently allow it to just fall into place so it's seated and no longer moves around. Lower the metal arm and lock it back into place. For the RAM, I've chosen 16 gigabytes of Corsair's DDR4 Vengeance LPX 3200 MHz RAM. To install it, which is a lot easier than saying the name of it, simply open the side latches of the RAM slots as shown here. Remember, roses are red, violets are blue. Install your RAM in slots four and two, unless you want everyone to laugh at you. Now the latches are open, grab your RAM and pay close attention to the notch by the gold teeth on each stick. Line this notch up with the notch in the slot on your motherboard. Once you've aligned them correctly, just gently push them in until you feel them slot into place. The side latches will automatically close themselves with a satisfying snap. In terms of storage, I've chosen the Sabrent 512GB M.2 form factor SSD. The price of M.2 drives are almost in line with 2.5 inch SSDs and the former offers significantly higher speeds. So this one is a bit of a no brainer. To install it, simply wiggle it into the M.2 slot on the motherboard. Once it's in, it'll be sticking out at a kind of weird angle like this at first, just waggling about. So secure it into place using one of the screws that came with the case. Next, remove the plastic brackets either side of the processor simply by unscrewing the screws then placing them to one side so you can probably find it in six months time and wonder what the hell these plastic things even are and more importantly where on earth they came from. Unbox the stock heatsink and please make sure you do not touch the underside of it as that's where the pre-applied thermal paste is. Line it up on top of the processor and use your screwdriver to screw all four screws into the mounting bracket. Make sure the AMD logo is on the left hand side of the motherboard, ignore the logo in the middle of the fan of course. Finally, plug the fan's power cable into the CPU fan header next to the RAM slots. 
For me, even on a tight budget, a case is so important aesthetically. That's why I've chosen the Corsair Carbide Spec 05 case, which is actually insanely cheap, awesome quality, and so good to work with. It even comes with a red LED case fan pre-installed. If it is out of stock, check out the AeroCool Cylon case, which even has some really nice multicolored LEDs on the front. You can then also refer to my $400 gaming PC video, which will show you how to hook up all the front panel connectors for that specific case too. Now, remove both side panels using the thumb screws and the Allen key provided, then lay the case down so you can see into it. First of all, install the IO shield that came in the box with your motherboard. Simply pop it into that gaping hole from the inside of the case until it clicks into place. Make sure you don't have it in upside down or I will know and I will be disappointed in you. This case has some pre-installed motherboard standoffs and fortunately for us, every single one of them is in the exact place they need to be as shown here. If they aren't, however, simply screw or unscrew them in by hand according to where the holes are on your motherboard. Gently lower the motherboard into the case and wiggle the inputs through the IO shield. The small holes on the motherboard should align with the standoffs that you had pre-installed or installed yourself. So using the screws provided with your case, screw your motherboard into the standoffs. Just don't over tighten them here, please. Now, here's the optional part that I threw in for Becky's brother's birthday, a couple of RGB case fans. Now, they definitely don't need to be pricey RGB fans like I've kind of gone with here, but either way, extra cooling never hurts. So even if you are on a tight budget, I'd always recommend buying a couple of these Be Quiet fans. I've linked them in the description. They are just $15 each. And then with those, you won't need to worry about hooking up all the LED wiring either. So to install the fan, start by removing the front of the case by using some gentle yet brute force. I'll be installing two Corsair LL120 RGB fans. I stupidly bought these individually, not realizing they do not ship with the extra parts you'll need to actually make them light up. So instead, I'll link the three pack below, which does fortunately ship with everything you'll need to fully install them properly. So with the fan logo facing outside of the case, place it over the gaping hole at the front of your case and screw it in using the screws that came with your fan. I actually only screwed in the screws at the bottom of the fan as the top holes didn't completely align with the case, but it was properly solidly secure. So I decided to let sleeping dogs lie on this occasion and leave it as it is. Next, plug the fan into the header labeled SysFan3 on your motherboard. Now, I could easily just plug this in directly like this and try to then hide the wiring by bunching it up but instead I opted to feed it through the nearest cutout and back through the cutout by the SysFan3 header, then plug it in because neat cable management just pleases my soul. As my fans are RGB fans, as I mentioned, I've got an extra cable with a yellow sticker on it. So I'll simply be feeding those through to the back of the case for later. For the second fan, which will be our exhaust, make sure the logo is facing into the case this time and roughly get it into place. Screw it in using all four screws, tightening each one gradually until they're all fully secured. Plug the fan's power cable straight into the sys fan header right by the SSD you installed earlier. Then try your best to bunch up the cable and just hide it underneath the case fan you just installed. Again, if you're using RGB fans like I am, feed the extra LED cable around the motherboard so it can't be seen and through the nearest cutout at the top for later. Replace the front of the case by gently putting it back into place and slapping it until it's secure. In terms of power supply, I've opted for the Corsair CV650. It is more than enough to power this rig, great value, and it comes as recommended by Linus Tech Tips power supply list. Sadly, it's also one of those products that is weirdly double the price on Amazon US. So if that's the case for you, go for the Thermaltake Smart 500 watt power supply, again linked in the description. To install it, place it at the very bottom of the case with the fan facing down as we have a dust filter down there. Screw it in at these four points until it's nice and secure. Now stand up your case and feed every single cable from your power supply through the nearest cutout. 
We won't need them all and there is ample space to hide those spare ones in the drive bays below. Out of this bunch, take the 24 pin ATX cable, the biggest one in other words, and feed it back through the middle cutout back to the front of the case like so. Next, take your 8 pin CPU cable and feed it through the cutout above that. Next, take the PCI Express power cable and feed it through the bottom cutout. Lastly, take all the other power supply cables you haven't used and just shove them all into the empty drive bays in the bottom left as you won't need them for this build. Meanwhile, on the other side of your case, locate your case's front panel connectors, they should be bunched up and tied up, and then feed them through to the back of your case through the cutout which the PCI Express cable just came through. Then, I know this seems weird, immediately feed them back through the cutout at the bottom of the case. Now, this might seem kind of pointless, but trust me, it makes for much neater cable management. Next, lay your case back down so you can see into it. Now we'll be connecting your front panel connectors. We'll be plugging them into these headers here at the bottom of the motherboard, JFP1, JUSB3, and JAUD1. Grab the smaller power and reset connectors and pay attention to the little cheat sheet on your motherboard by the JFP1 header. If your motherboard doesn't have this little diagram, simply refer to the motherboard manual. This diagram will show you exactly where each connector should go in that particular header, so proceed to connect them accordingly. Noting the pins that I left empty here should help you work out if yours are correct. Bear in mind that if these aren't correctly arranged, your PC won't turn on. N no big deal. Take the biggest cable out of your front panel connectors and plug it straight into the JUSB3 header with the small clip on top facing upwards. Lastly, grab that colorful HD audio cable and plug it into JAUD1. Great news, there's now more exciting plugging in to do, but we are almost there now. Take your 8-pin CPU cable that you fed through from the back of the case earlier and with the clip facing upwards, plug it in right next to your processor and heatsink until it clicks into place. Again, if not correctly seated, your PC won't turn on. Next, take your 24-pin ATX cable and plug it into the port right next to your RAM with the clip this time facing to the right. With some gentle force and a little bit of wiggling, it should click securely into place. Once again, if this isn't correctly seated, your PC won't turn on. For the graphics card, I've gone for the monster that is the EVGA GeForce RTX 2060 KO GPU. Again, as recommended by Linus Tech Tips. To install it, start by unscrewing the second, third and seventh bracket on the back of your case. Then unscrew the guard above those brackets and proceed to remove that guard and the brackets too. To show you just how easy it is to install a graphics card, I actually got Becky to do this part and she made it look every bit as easy as it actually is. Simply open the latch on the PCI slot and carefully align the graphics card until it settles into the slot but isn't fully pushed in. Then simply just pop it into place until seated and use one screw to secure it. Now locate the PCI Express power cable that you fed through earlier. Since it has two identical plugs on this cable, one of which we won't need, I'm just going to use a simple Velcro cable tie to stop it from waggling around in an effort to try and keep things neat and tidy. Now, you just need to pinch together the plug so that the extra section is perfectly aligned with the rest of it, then with a clip facing downwards, plug it into the graphics card. Job done. Next, here's what I don't think I've ever seen any PC build video include a Wi-Fi network card. I actually haven't included this in the budget because, well, nobody else does. And technically it's optional if you're gonna access the internet through an ethernet cable. But hey, at least I have the common decency to tell you that you won't be able to use Wi-Fi unless you buy this. These only cost around $35 and for me, they should be pretty much mandatory. So to install it, start by plugging in the supplied cable into the small white port on the card itself. Align this with slot seven on your motherboard, the very bottom one in other words, and pop it into place. Take the other end of the cable from the card and plug it straight into the JUSB one header on your motherboard. Secure the card with a screw from the outside of the case, then screw in the antennae by hand and replace the guard we removed earlier and screw that back into place too. 
Flip your case over and optionally tie up some of your cables into bunches to try and keep things nice and neat. I just used that Velcro cable tie stuff I used earlier. I did find a sneaky little fan cable down here hiding which will need to be plugged in so that the pre-installed case fan will actually work. So feed it through the middle cutout and plug it straight into the sys fan 4 header. You can now turn your case back over so we can see the rear of it. Now if you're not using LED fans feel free to skip ahead to the part where I put the sides of the case back on. If you are using LED fans then nice choice. Here is how to make sure they light up. For these fans in particular, you will need the Lighting Node Pro, which comes free in the pack of three LL120 fans. I stupidly bought the fans individually and had to buy this separately, so please don't make the same mistake I did. To install it, remove the adhesive sticker on the back and stick it just roughly somewhere around the top left of the back of your case. Plug those LED fan cables with the yellow stickers into ports 1 and 2. Next you'll of course need to power the Lighting Node Pro by grabbing a SATA power cable from that wrapped nest of power cables below and plugging it into the SATA connector on the Lighting Node Pro. Pretty easy. But oh no, the fun doesn't stop there. You now need an RGB hub as well. Something which is included in the 3 pack which I also had to buy separately. Start by plugging in the connector cable supplied into the Lighting Node Pro and then into the RGB hub in port 1. Next, take the RGB hub SATA connector and plug it into another SATA power cable taken from that rat's nest of power cables at the bottom of your case. Shove the RGB hub into the rat's nest to tr try and hide your shame and get rid of it. And that's it. You can now put the metal side of your case back on, secure it back into place using the original thumb screws, flip the case back over and take the last chance to check that everything is properly seated, all the cables are securely in place and no cables are touching fans or anything like that. If you're feeling confident like I clearly am in this video, replace the clear panel using the Allen key screws but I'd recommend making sure it turns on first before you do that. Now it's finally time to get it all hooked up to your monitor, mouse, keyboard and hit the power button. If nothing happens, Rewatch this whole video in shame to make sure you haven't missed anything and double check your motherboard manual to make sure your front panel connectors are in the right place. If it turns on and posts, great job. I mean, I'm pretty sure I didn't manage that when I built my first PC, but now you're pretty safe to put the clear side of your case back on. Now you're at the point where you need to install Windows, all the drivers for all of your hardware, but instead of me showing you how to install Windows, how to install all of the new drivers for everything, I'm going to throw a couple of helpful links in the description below to show you exactly how to do that because whether I tell you or someone else does, it's going to be exactly the same, so get that done next. What we're going to do right now is look at the performance results of this absolute beast. So the results are in and they are every bit as impressive as I knew they would be. All of these games were tested at 1440p at high settings and they still offered insane detail, stunning visuals and smooth gameplay. Needless to say at 1080p I was seeing an average of 200 FPS across nearly all of these titles too. There really wasn't a game that dropped below 70 FPS at 1440p, so if you're looking for a real powerhouse gaming PC without totally obliterating your bank account aiming for 4K gaming, this build is a very formidable one that's going to future-proof you for a long damn time. Of course, it's also well equipped for video editing, Photoshop and more intensive creative tasks and it handled streaming no problem. When your wallet recovers, my first upgrade here would be more storage and of course you can't forget that you've still got two empty RAM slots which you can throw more into down the line. All in all, if you've got the cash for this thing, this build will not let you down and is worth absolutely every single penny. And hey, by building it yourself you're going to save yourself a lot of money anyway. Now that you've watched this video, you might want to check out my $400 PC build if this is all feeling a little bit too expensive because that is actually seriously good for the price that goes into it. Or you can check out my latest video here. Don't know what it is, it's going to be great. Either way, click one of those and I will see you in the next video.